But I had some great adventures. I want to share one day with you about why I'm optimistic. Went down to the Bay Area in the course of writing this thing. In the morning, uh, went and talked to a guy named John O'Donnell. John is a guy who was involved in an eight-person uh, company in Australia developing solar thermal energy. Now, we know, and the reason I mention this is because cars are just part of the system we need to develop. We're all focused on the car, right, because we're car junkies in America. But it's very, very important for us in the plug-in industry and the electric car industry to understand the car is just one part of the entire system that has been developed. So in the morning, I go meet John o O'Donnell down in Palo Alto. He, he had like an eight-person firm in Australia. They said, we're going to rig up some mirrors, concentrate the sun's energy, heat up water, drive a steam turbine. A guy named Vinod Kolsa heard about this, a guy who made a bundle at Sun, and now is looking for the next best thing, moved them to Palo Alto. And in one year, this company went from eight employees in Australia to having signed a commercial contract in Florida and California to provide enough electricity through solar thermal energy to provide almost up to 400,000 homes with electricity. Now, why is that important? It's important to me because when I was trying to uh, pass the renewable portfolio standard, one of my Florida colleagues says, we don't have renewable energy in Florida. And I said, well, how about like solar energy? He says, we can't do solar energy in Florida. I said, I thought it said the Sunshine State on the license plate. <laughs> What's up with that? And he says, no, no, we got too many clouds. We can't do that. Well, one week after that conversation, John O'Donnell signed this contract with a company in, in a utility in Florida to provide this electricity through solar thermal power. That is not the only game in town. The company is Bright Source. There's several companies. What these companies do, I believe they are on a path to be competitive with coal-based uh, energy within a decade or a decade and a half. And I've looked with some skepticism, healthy skepticism on their numbers, but I believe they are going to be close to coal-based electricity very, very shortly. It is a stunning advance as soon as we can drive the scales of economy and reduce the cost of capital to get these projects done. So I get done uh, talking uh, to John. I drive over uh, to Google, meet with Dan and, and some others, and what does Google tell me about? Uh, you know, I wrote this book about clean energy. I kind of thought I knew everything about clean energy. But the folks at Google tell me about a couple of their investments. They tell me about their investment in a company called Alterock. Alterock is an enhanced geothermal firm. And guess what? Seattle, Washington. Here's this company in Seattle, Washington, literally in my neighborhood, that is developing a way to basically uh, drill down three kilometers plus, create a fracture zone, pump water down, bring it up at 300 degrees, and drive a steam turbine. You don't have to depend where the fractures of the earth are. You create your own, and you build up, you, you bring up that geothermal energy. Now, here's a company in my neighborhood, which according to the DOE, there's enough energy available probably to drive half of the electrical grid in the United States if we can commercialize this technology. And Google is very, very excited about making that investment. Here's a technology that I really had not become familiar with right in my backyard. I'm walking out in the parking lot of Google, and the brother of one of Google's founders um, comes up and he says, do you want to see some solar energy porn? I said, solar energy porn? You know, I'm not, it doesn't poll very well. I don't think porn is <laughs> something I'm particularly interested in. I said, you know, sure, right. Let's go behind the bush and we'll look at some solar energy porn. But he takes out of his pocket, he takes out this wonderful, shiny, you know, uh, strip of uh, some, some silicone and glass-based thing. I said, great, what is this? He says, this could be, you know, the most efficient PV cell on Earth using a concentrated system to concentrate the solar lens onto the most efficient uh, PV system, which I believe is from Spectra Vision, I think is a, a subdivision of Boeing. And he says, I call it solar energy porn because I am so excited about it. And here's, here's Google making the transition from software and the internet to clean energy, the largest transition of intellectual and financial capital in world history that's going on. So then I, I drive up. They put me in a hydrogen fuel cell bus. Now, I think hydrogen is quite a ways off because of the distribution costs associated with hydrogen. 
but I get to drive this hydrogen fuel cell bus. They let me drive it around the, the parking lot. By the way, I'm pretty proud of this. I'm, according to them, uh, and this was the first hydrogen bus in commercial usage. According to them, I'm the first member of the US Congress ever to drive a hydrogen fuel cell bus. I'm, I'm kind of proud of that. They pointed out that they had allowed uh, George Bush six months before to sit in the driver's seat, but they would not let him drive. Now, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Probably a bunch of Democrats or something. I'm not sure what that was about. But um, so now, and they think this has application where you have, where you have uh, feeding stations and, and large fleets. We may have hydrogen at, at some point. Otherwise, I think it's a, 